Want me to check it? I think we're good. Right? Yeah, we're good. Why do you? <clears throat> All right, gang. Your saltwater guide coming to you with that series that you guys have been begging for. This deep drop swordfish thing. Now remember a couple years ago we were on the cutting edge of that kite fishing with the flying fish and the rubber flyer and all that stuff. And those of you that followed that simple recipe, you did very, very well. You caught a lot of 200 and 300 pound bluefin. Well, we're going to do this for you again. Now I got the deep drop guys. SoCal deep drop, Mike, Nate, they're going to kind of give you guys a background on where they came from. And we're also going to talk about how you can catch swordfish in Southern California if you follow this simple recipe. Now it's totally up to you. You can absolutely suck if you want. You don't have to follow any of this. You can go out there and suck. But like I always say, it's your right to suck from now on. You do not have to catch fish. But if you want to catch fish, follow our simple recipe on any of the videos I made for you guys. And this is going to go right along lines of that, this deep drop thing. These guys have been very successful for a long time. Nate especially has been doing this his whole life since he was 15 years old. All he's done is killed swordfish in Southern California. So he's, this is cool. Can you guys quit texting me right now? I know you guys all want to know what I know, but just give us a break. We're trying to make a video. Let's turn your phone off. I'm going to turn it off so you guys can't get a hold of me. <laughs> It's what happens when you have thousands of members. They all want to get in on whatever knowledge I got. So there, I'm turning off the phone because it's all about you today. So, Nate, Mike, tell us a little bit about yourselves. Go first, Nate, so these people understand why you might want to listen to what Nate has to say. Well, you don't have to listen to me, as uh, Dave <laughs> says. But uh, I've been fishing swordfish since I was 18, um, quite a few years ago. I think 18 years, so about half my life. Uh, I was part one of the first few boats where that started deep drop. Um, obviously, I didn't pioneer it, but uh, I was on the forefront with it, and I had a lot of experience, a lot of time, a lot of energy invested in it, so I know what to do, what not to do. I've caught them harpoon, I've caught them gill net, caught them hook and line. You name it, I've caught a swordfish that way, so, you know, just that insight I have and all the time I've done, spent doing this, it's, uh, it's a lot of years, a lot of experience to be able to share some of it with you. Obviously, not everything, but we'll give you some uh, good pointers and get you ahead of the curve, so at least you're a uh, in the right place in the right area and you're fishing with the right gear and then michael you remember mike from the from the kite videos here yeah mike now i said dan hansen kind of brought me into this world and i got put in touch with nate here when we we're trying to learn how to catch swordfish on the wild and sack back in the day after doing all that blue fin and you know nate gave us the advice but we didn't listen to him because our boss just figured out figured he knew everything but I, uh, I worked for Nate. I learned a lot from him. I learned how to rig the baits, find fish, kill fish, clean them, everything in between sword fishing. I've had a blast doing it. I've had the privilege of fishing two seasons with him about. And um, and just stoked to see a new fishery coming to Southern California after watching the bluefin happen and watching this happen. Uh, you know, anything's possible. So you either can take it or leave it. It's up to you. Now, this is something we should talk about. Mike got into this thing a couple years ago. He got the opportunity to fish with Nate. Nate, how many fish has Mike got a chance to catch over the last two years? This number's uh, unbelievable. Well, we had 107 the first year, and we had 117 this year, so. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good. You know, Not these bad. guys are having a party right now because they caught one. Could you imagine catching 107 in a season? And how long's your season? We only fish about 52 days, 53 days. Wow. That's amazing. So more than two fish a day. That's pretty amazing, huh, Mike? Yeah, it was a lot of fun watching it and being a part of it. Why it's you guys? Lot, though, it's not easy. And Captain Nate here's runs a tight ship, so. Why you guys are? I'll deep be careful dropping. if you were a swordfish. What do you when you're deep dropping? What are you doing? You just going out there and deep dropping? Are you fishing other stuff while you're deep dropping? Are you strictly deep drop? Uh, when we come into an area, if we go strictly for swordfish. We go to an area where we're going to be beneficially fishing swordfish and not because there's some tuna around because this is around. We go to where we think the swordfish are and if there happens to be some other fish around, we'll try to, you know, catch them a little bit. But the goal is swordfish, so that's, that's what we focus on. That's why I'm trying to make you guys understand when you guys get out there, 90% of the time it's why the tuna are biting, it's why the drought are on the kelps, it's why the yellowtail are on the kelps. So if you don't focus on one fish you're probably going to end up catching nothing so if you're going to go do this deep drop thing you're probably just going to want to deep drop because what happens when you how much line do you got to put out 
Uh, roughly about a thousand feet. People go deeper, some people go shallower, but that's kind of the given number. So if you put out a thousand feet of line, Mike, and then you pick up the binoculars and you spot a 500 bluefin jumping out of the water, now what? What do you got to do? You got to sit there and, and wait to catch your swordfish. You don't you know, wind up the fishing. thousand feet of line and then take off running like a crazy man after the bluefin? Unless you're Dave Hanson. <laughs> no. He, so I'm just trying to tell you guys, when you go sort deep dropping, you have to be committed to go deep dropping. You cannot go deep dropping, fly the kite, go diving, go snorkeling, throw the dinghy in the water. Those are the things Mike and I used to have to do when we ran the wild and sack. There were days where we, this is what we did. We started the day off diving at San Clemente Island. In the middle of the diving, we would go deep drop at San Clemente Island. Then while we were deep dropping, we throw the dinghy in the water. And then we deep drop, we dinghy in the water. Then we throw the kite up and we drag the kite around with the buoys out. And then at the end of that, then we bring everything in and then we go to Avalon for dinner. All in about an hour. All in a couple of hours. <laughs> so I'm just trying to tell you, if you want to be successful at this, like Nate said, Focus on the deep drop thing when you go deep dropping. Leave your binoculars down because they're not going to do it. Once you put your lines in the water, what do you want to do? Drink a beer, Take a beer watch some TV, relax, some listen cards, to some music, play cards. Relax. It's going to take a while. Sometimes you get bit right away, but sometimes it takes a while. So now that you know who we're talking to, now these guys are going to go through a lot of different stuff. They're going to go through why they use the hooks they use, why they rig the way they rig, how they rig the rods, how they fight the fish once they hook it, and what they do at the end to get it on the boat. All these are going to be on this video series. And then what we'll do later on down the line, when Nate or Mike are lucky enough to catch another swordfish, they'll show you exactly how to cut it up later on down the line. That's to come. That'll be part of our filleting video but right now we're just going to jump from this into the proper way to rig and then from there we'll go to where we're going to fish at stuff like that so hang in there guys and watch for the next part all right gang if you think this looks interesting and you want to be a part of this and learn more about how to fish for swordfish log on to your saltwater guide and learn more about this